If they don't need this, but I like doing this an awful lot. That pretty much just sums up this video. Hi, I'm your host, Nick, and this is a video about misting. Before we get into this video, I'd just like to clarify a couple of things. I know that there are a lot of videos like this floating around on PlantTube, but I would like to say that I tried to reference credible sources in the making of this video so I could kind of give some meaning behind what I'm saying, like academic articles or websites associated with the universities or the government, or at least people that have in-depth horticultural experience, not people dancing to say so with their mint obliqua flambés on Instagram reels. The second one is that this video does not apply to air plants, mosses, filmy ferns, liverworts, and basically whatever takes up water through its leaves. I know I'm gonna get these comments, comments by people that need warning labels not to drink bleach. We're talking about plants that take up water through their roots, which is the majority of plants in this community. Also, I don't count moss poles because you're still misting roots, just ones that are above ground and not in the pot. So today I'm going to tell you why misting doesn't make sense for most of the plants that we grow and how it can be detrimental to those plants in certain circumstances. Beyond misting, we will also be discussing other ways that people attempt to increase humidity around their plants and to what extent they actually work. Before we talk about misting and its less popular sisters, we must discuss why humidity is beneficial to plants in order to understand why these methods work or don't work. Plants are covered in stomata. These are openings for gas exchange. As we all know, plants take up carbon dioxide and emit oxygen in a process called photosynthesis, or photosynthesis if you pronounced stomata, stomata, unless they are achlorophyllous, hollow parasitic plants. You know someone was going to comment that. If the stomata are closed, the plant cannot photosynthesize unless you are a cam plant in which you sequester carbon dioxide at night and use it during the day when the stomata are closed to prevent water loss. You don't need to know that, but I know someone was going to comment that. Most cam plants are succulents or epiphytes like orchids, but a lot of orchids I would recommend that you don't mist because if you get water in the growth point, it'll lead to crown rot and your $50 orchid is dead. I couldn't really find anything to do with cam plants and misting in particular because it's kind of specific, but as far as I can deduct, don't mist your succulents. Mist your orchids if you want to, but be careful, I'd probably just stick to the roots and that's watering, and bromelids. Air plants are bromelids, so I guess that's fine. Just don't do it at night, which you shouldn't because you shouldn't mist plants at night anyways. What I'm trying to get at through that convolution is that there must be a certain level of humidity in the air for a plant to photosynthesize efficiently. If there is not enough humidity around the plant, the dry air will pull water out of the stomata. The plant will realize this and the stomata will close. Therefore, no gas exchange, therefore, no photosynthesis. Even if your plant is glimmering in the sun, if the stomata are closed, unless it's a cam plant, it can't photosynthesize. If there is sufficient humidity and the air is not pulling too much water out of the plant, the stomata will remain open and the plant can photosynthesize. Now that that's over with, on to misting and let's clarify where the water goes and what the water does after you've misted your plant. When you mist your plants, it's not going to create a bubble of humidity around the plant. The water will evaporate off the leaf and travel from high concentration, the plant, to low concentration, probably somewhere else in the room or your house or outside because our houses are not airtight. What I just talked to you about is the concept of diffusion. And if you don't believe me, go boil a pot of water. The cloud of water vapor, I look like a psychic, does not stay over the pot. It rises into the air and dissipates. You can't see this on your plant because it's happening more slowly. But if you'd like to blowtorch your stromanthi, you'll see it immediately. Some of you might want to. I've heard they're jerks. Although my Satyanthi and Calathea are doing fine. If you wanted to increase humidity for your plant through spraying, in theory, you would just have to spray your entire room. Water would have to be evaporating off of everything, so all of the air 
in the room would be equally humid. Otherwise, a few minutes and it's gone. And that might be a problem with your landlord or if you're trying to grow plants instead of mold. So you're probably thinking spraying plants only increases humidity for so long, not a significant amount of time, but some is better than none, right? The partial answer to this, and we'll get to the rest of them, is probably not. If you share the misfortune of having a hot summer, cold winter climate with me, you know that not only you suffer, but your plants suffer when winter and summer have a kickboxing match in the place of what should be spring and fall. I tend to get sinus infections in the fall. Some people get nosebleeds when the dry husk of what was a warm summer's breeze turns the mucous membranes in our sinuses into something that looks like a dried up riverbed. I also have reason to believe that it dries up their brains because they tend to drive in snow like they're in Tokyo Drift. Quickly shifting temperatures and humidity is generally not good for organisms that require fairly stable equatorial weather for the correct functioning of their existence. Like us, who are not muskoxen, and for philodendron that are not pine trees. Actually, are there any muskoxen out there trying in vain to use your touch pads with your hooves? Sorry, I don't mean to be homocentric, but if you're homo homocentric, that's fine though. Just pause RuPaul's Drag Race when you get a notification from one of my videos. For increased humidity to be fairly beneficial, it must be fairly constant, not 100% humidity for 10 minutes and then back to normal. This one may be surprising and a little bit hard to digest, and that is misting is detrimental to plants because it mimics rain. I know, right? Rain? Rain? Rain is bad? Rain is good. Rain is good for the roots. As I have already discussed, if there is water on the leaf, it is covering the stomata, therefore gas exchange cannot occur, therefore photosynthesis cannot take place. Beyond that, most plants will close their stomata in response to rain. So even if there's not water over the whole leaf, it'll just shut down the whole leaf. I would also like to say after the water evaporates, the plant is not going back to the same amount of photosynthetic capacity that it was before the rain to after. Photosynthesis doesn't just turn on and off. It is a series of physiological mechanisms and chemical reactions within a plant. When you derail it, it takes a bit for it to start up again. This means photosynthesis will be reduced longer than the time that the leaves were wet. Ultimately, I believe if you're misting your plants several times a day, you could have a measurable impact on the amount of photosynthesis that the plant can carry out. Imagine you're having a picnic. It takes a while to put together the picnic and then you have to go and set everything up. I don't do this, by the way. Of course, you set up this picnic because your clinically incorrect weatherman said it was going to be sunny all day. You get all your plates out and whatever, you start eating your 72 hour potato salad. Three days! And then the rain goes away, so you set up your picnic again. You go to eat your tumultuous spud conglomeration and God has said no. Anyways, imagine you're a plant, you're trying to eat your potato salad and some jerk keeps spraying water in it. How would you feel? How would you feel? I just want to eat my potato salad. Okay? I'm also going to get comments saying, rain is natural. Rain is natural. Rain is natural. So for you Young Living Essential Oils sales representatives, yes, it's natural for leaves to be wet. You know it's also natural? Organic pesticides, pterodactyls, measles. Would you drink pesticides? Would you poke a pterodactyl? Are you not happy that most of our children live past age 10 because of vaccines? I know people that put lemon essential oil in their water. Now, I know this sounds far-fetched, but maybe use a lemon instead of drinking high concentrations of volatile organic compounds? No? Okay. If you're seethingly applying sclerescence right now and you don't believe me, I have proof. And it's called a drip tip. Not a triptych, not a dick tick, not a lip kit, 
Not a dipstick. Not a McRib. Excuse me for that. Not a Mc. A drip tip. Let's get all my drip tips in here. Below dendron me comes. If this isn't a drip tip, I don't know what to tell you. My baby Choco Red. I think I'm gonna make a video insulting this soon. Look at her. She's a little crooked, but that won't hurt anyone. Is there anything more iconic than a fishtail Hoya? These, these are drip tips. Like the whole leaf is a drip tip. Like that's why people love this because it rains where this lives. It's just all drip tip. And look how tippy this is. It's just, it's all tips. Look at all those tips. I don't know why this is lobed. It could be because of the rain, but the only drip tips are really like at the end of the leaf. These aren't really so pointy. Oh yeah, and uh, my ficus Benjamina Marguerite. Let us try and show you all of this. Uh, I think she's cute. I really like her. Plants that live in areas of high moisture have an incentive to channel water off of their leaves for the reason aforementioned, along with some others I'm going to tell you about. Beyond getting the water off of the leaf so the plant can photosynthesize, it's also not good to have a wet leaf in the rainforest because the water evaporates very slowly because the humidity is very high. Due to this, lichens, moss, algae, and sometimes small plants will grow on top of leaves and obscure the sun from getting to it. Therefore, the drip tip. Not all plants that wish to rid water from their epidermis use drip tips though. Plants like Colocasia and Lotus have altered their leaf surface and covered it with a waxy coating in order to repel water that way. The point I'm trying to get across is there are things that plants experience in nature that aren't necessarily beneficial to their growth. They just have to put up with it and adapt because of the phenomenon that is the earth. And they make beautiful drip tips amongst other things. So besides preventing photosynthesis, what other negative things can misting do to your plants? We already touched upon this earlier in the video, but having water on your plants for a long duration of time can cause fungal problems. If you're still planning on misting your plants, probably do it during the daytime, preferably like in the afternoon when it's warm and there's the most sunlight. However, we should be honest with ourselves and uh, it's usually perpetually nighttime where most people keep their plants. That tip might not be helpful. The next unfortunate consequence of misting, especially if one of your plants is already fungusy from being misted too much. If you are misting a plant and you have other plants in close proximity, Water from the plant you're misting can drip onto others and it can contain bacteria, mold, or fungi if the original plant has it. Potentially smaller insects as well, like thrips, aphids, spider mites. But if you're propelling snails across your living room, I think your misting techniques are a little bit unorthodox. We're trying to fit as many plants in our house as possible without the government thinking we have a grow operation. Next one, if you mist your plants, water is going to invariably land on the surface of your soil, which makes your soil a great fungus gnat nursery. Fungus gnats are pretty wimpy and they need the surface of the soil to be moist in order to lay their eggs because they can't burrow down into the soil. So if you could just keep that dry, that would be great. Or at least as dry as you possibly can most of the time by not misting it. Or keep misting your plant and find a dumb solution someone in our community on TikTok would make, like placing coffee filters around the pot before you mist your plant or misting them upside down, or anything else extremely unhelpful that would take up your entire weekend. This isn't really a negative consequence of misting, just something that I found that confused me. Apparently misting is a good way to get rid of dust. Like misting and wiping the leaf off, or I don't know. Um, I know it didn't say that, I'll try and find where I found it. Does water vaporize dust? I'm assuming it goes onto the floor or back into the air. Out of sight, out of mind, right? Just like those dead Calatheas stuffed in between my walls. Imagine I did have, <laughs> imagine my walls were full of dead plants. <laughs> so I would be like that lady from Legally Blonde that got liposuction and was like selling like 
a workout something. My nose function! Oh God! I have come to the conclusion that the best outcome of misting your plants is nothing. You may not see much detrimental effect from misting, but of course, we select plants either as individuals or nurseries or stores select them in order to be tolerant of shifting conditions. Stores don't want plants to arrive dead before they put them out on the shop floor and they don't want us to kill them sooner than we manage to do. Rocks for drainage, anyone? Okay, we're done with misting. Thank you for joining me on that journey. Oh, on to the other methods that probably don't work. Humidity trays, I think, are better than nothing by a very small, minuscule margin. For the plants, that is, not you, because you have to routinely scrape the scum out of them. I'm gonna move to the center. I don't really have any infographics that I need anymore. Yes, the water evaporates and produces humidity, but as we've already discussed with misting, it doesn't stick around for very long. And even though the evaporation is continuous, the rate at which it evaporates is so negligible that it doesn't raise the humidity around the plant hardly any. A member of the American Orchid Society tested this in the winter in Minnesota. No, thank you. The results were a three, three at the, at the humidity tray, to 0% increase in humidity from the tray to a foot. That's not going to help much. <laughs> that's like putting frosting on a cardboard box. I feel like that's a representation of a lot of things that happen in this community. Some people suggest crowding your plants together. I think this could potentially work. I don't know the physics behind it and I haven't tried it because I'll let you know in a minute. However, I think you'd have to crowd the plants pretty close together, like a mini forest and like having a canopy to keep the humidity and water vapor being released from being swept away by the zombified air. The problem I found with this, and I've experienced it myself, not because I was trying to increase humidity for my plants, but because I just don't have any space, is that insect infestations can happen very easily because the plants can just, they're just all together. They're all surrounding each other. Just rubbing leaves. Did you hear? Amy and Michael were rubbing leaves in the break room. I know, right? If I put all of my velvet leaf philodendrons together, which I wouldn't because I care, a mini civilization of spider mites would form and overthrow my house. That's all I have to say about that. I think it's a terrible idea, especially for spider mites, because spider mites like low humidity. So you are in a low humidity environment, and that method's probably not going to work that well. So they're just gonna be like, spring break, Cabo, South Beach. Next, people putting their plants in the bathroom and or shower. I mean, if your plants are in the shower, they are in the bathroom but like, that's not what I meant. Let's start out with keeping your plant in the bathroom full time, like in a window or something. This will not work unless you are constantly in the shower. Remember I talked about plants needing pretty consistent humidity? This, this is why it doesn't work. Tell me, when you take a shower and then you go in the bathroom the next day, are the mirrors still fogged up? Fun fact, humidity can actually be lower in the bathroom sometimes because people tend to heat their bathrooms before they take showers because people usually don't like to be cold, naked, and wet unless you're Bear grills or something. I don't know. Capybara, I don't know. I think we know heating the house makes the air drier. That does not exclude the bathroom. It's kind of worse in a way because it makes it even more of a fluctuation because you go from regular to really dry to super moist back down to regular humidity. As I've mentioned before in the video, there are plants that tolerate a lot of abuse that we grow and I'm sure those will do fine in a bathroom window and probably better in a bathroom window because they're directly in a window and not in someone's refrigerator. Yes, I know there, there's a light, but it goes off when you shut it. All I'm trying to say is that plants 
in your bathroom will probably do equally as well outside of your bathroom. So if you have like a bathroom plant and you're like, it can only live in my bathroom because of the humidity, it can probably live anywhere else in your house that has light. So please don't buy something that requires 90% humidity around the clock not to turn into a cow chip. Or, 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 because you already know there's a ridiculous alternative on this channel, always, you could open your shower to an Italian soccer team and it would just be going around the clock. I promise it's for my begonia. Okay, on to the shower. Can we talk about what people call spa day? I'm sure your plants would rather like be in front of a window. I don't know photosynthesizing, which you're clearly preventing them from doing in multiple ways. Not in your shower getting pelted with water. This literally sounds like my nightmare. An entire day of me doing nothing and achieving nothing. Wasting water, probably wasting electricity, and my plants not being able to grow. And I forgot, uh, you have to clean your shower out after unless you just like to step in dirt <laughs> when you're showering, which is pretty counterproductive. The reason for this is already give them humidity for a day. It's not helpful because even if the stomata are open the whole day, they're in the shower, they're not getting any light. And to remove dust, and people do this routinely, people do this like once a week on the same day. Where is all of this dust coming from? Do you have 10 golden retrievers with a dandruff problem? Are you reconstructing a life-size model of Michelangelo's David out of asbestos? Do you shear guanacos in your living room? I guess if you live in Oklahoma, I give you a pass. I guess it also knocks off spider mites. Maybe this is more of a preventative method, but still, for me, not worth it. I'll just, I'll, I'll find it when I find it. I think most people would rather wait until they see it instead of just like haphazardly spraying all of the leaves on all of their plants every weekend. If you have spider mites, I would recommend rinse them off the plants. However, you'd want to apply something after, like I use insecticidal soap, or you can just use like dish soap and neem oil or something. I understand. People want to love their plants. They want to do extra things for them. I get it. It can be very relaxing and zen to take care of plants, and maybe you only have 10 of them, but you want to take a day to yourself to take care of your plants. So you have to figure out things that you could do with your plants that haven't already been done, and I guess this could be an option. I'm not trying to come off as a jerk and try and put down people that want to spend time with their plants when I usually do the bare minimum. I don't see any major harm in putting your plants in the shower unless it's an aloe, which I have seen. Lastly, the only method i found that works. The humidifier which I've warmed in the micro -wave. Humidifiers are good because they're pumping a large amount of water vapor into the air, and that's what it takes to actually raise the humidity in a space. Many of them have a hygrostat, which is like a thermostat, which controls how much water vapor they put out based on what the humidity level is in the air and what you set it at. If the humidifier does not have a hygrostat in it, controlling the humidity. You can always buy a hygrometer, which is like a thermometer. It'll tell you how much humidity is in the air. You can then adjust your humidifier accordingly. I have a hygrometer right here, and as you can see, the humidity is falling because I just took it out of my little greenhouse enclosure. I think it was at 70, but my house tends to stay in between 30 and 40 percent. The plants I have in there are mostly in there for the light and not the humidity. I just have the tent to trap in the heat. It's just never really been an issue for me. The professor that I got the bottom watering information from last video says in his humidity article that it's ideally 70 to 80 percent for these plants. I think it's kind of impossible to keep your house at that humidity and I don't know like what the ramifications of that would be with mold and whatnot especially during the winter when it's cold. I would probably say if your house is really dry like go for 50 like 80 percent is a little wild. My Anthurium crystallinum is the only plant I think is suffering. However, it is putting out a leaf, and there's another leaf 
in here that's coming out and some type of growth that's growing right here. It's fine, I mean, it's doing well, it's growing, but the edges are crispy. Just FYI, I didn't get it like this. I grew it from a node and it was also doing this in the summer. So maybe it's not a humidity thing, but this was leafless when I got it, so I grew it. Conclusion, misting is not that great but it's also not very bad. I think it can have a placebo effect on people, but from my understanding, the science really does not back that. One of the articles I was reading for this video suggested that people's plants might do better when they mist them, not because of the misting, that doesn't really do much, but because people are paying attention to them more and their needs or infestations or what have you. Like I said, I think people just want to spend time with their plants and there's nothing wrong with that. If you love it, I like doing this an awful lot and nothing bad has happened, go for it. That's it. I hope this helped. Uh, definitely like the video if you liked the video because it took a long time for me to compile all of this and make it make sense. Plants are covered in stomata. <laughs> 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 like bad bugs, you were good with them until you changed your sheets. Like why now? Why now is it an issue? They're just trying to live. You've got a lot of blood. Selfish.